While AMD didn't seem to want to give any benchmark results for their new RX 9070 or 9070XT GPUs at their CES presentation, they do have a 9070 on display playing Call of Duty Black Ops 6. And it's being reported that a, a journalist was able to test it in the built-in benchmark, at which it scored 99 frames per second on average at 4K extreme settings without FSR enabled. However, I've done my own testing comparing it to a 7900 XT and 7900 XTX in my own system, so it is running in a different system, uh, but th it leads me to believe that Perhaps the graphic settings weren't applied correctly in this benchmark, and honestly, perhaps we shouldn't read way too much into this. Let me give you the details, the results, my interpretation. But again, it's also possible that maybe the 9070 is just way better in Call of Duty Black Ops 6 than, than I, I would have anticipated. So anyway, where's this all coming from? I first saw this at videocards.com. However, they are referencing the test actually being done by IGN. Looks like this article is by Jacqueline Thomas. Uh, saying, I benchmarked the AMD Radeon RX 9070. They're saying that uh, it was on, uh, there was a 9070 at a booth at Call of Duty Black Ops 6, and Call of Duty Black Ops 6 has a built-in benchmark tool. Uh, looks like they were then able to run the built-in benchmark tool, and these were the results. They're claiming it's at 4K native resolution with no FSR, no other kind of upscaling, and this does report as render resolution at 100%. It shows RDNA 4 graphics, which makes sense. Uh, oftentimes, pre-release, uh, pre-official drivers don't give the actual name of the product, and the CPU that it's reporting using here uh, is the 9950X3D. So if I'm gonna run com uh, comparable tests, I don't have a 9950X3D because that's not released yet. I do have a 9800X3D, uh, which should have similar gaming performance. Also note that it's reported that the built-in benchmark tool is reporting that there is no CPU bottleneck. It's CPU bottlenecked at 0%, so this was a GPU limited test. Uh, they also mentioned that they saw some, uh, a little bit of odd graphic anomalies, which I have a feeling, they didn't specify what that was, but when running this benchmark myself, like I am right here on the 7900 uh, uh, XT, for example, I noticed that the, uh, the gun model doesn't actually show up in first person view in the built-in benchmark. Let me get to an actual scene with the gun in it. So I'm curious if that's the uh, visual uh, you know, artifact that they were referring to. However, I've noticed that that's just an issue with this benchmark tool right now. I saw this on my Intel Arc GPU I tested recently and the AMD and Nvidia cards I tested against it. And I'm seeing it here again on the uh, fully released 7900 XT here. Uh, so, so anyway, that's kind of my, my response to, to those uh, uh, points that they made. Now, the IGN article did not have a comparable GPU tested at the same settings. They just had results for a, a 4080 Super that was using DLSS quality at those settings, so it was not an apples to apples comparison. Also, when uh, testing out Call of Duty games, I don't think it's a good representation of the performance of AMD versus Nvidia on average, because generally this is one of the games that overperforms on AMD. In other words, AMD does better than usual relative to their typically similar performance uh, Nvidia GPUs. That's just how certain games are. Certain games favor certain GPU architectures, and we don't for sure know that, that RDNA 4 is gonna be favored in this game, but that's another thing to keep in mind. So I think that the best thing to do is to compare this AMD result with other AMD results to see how it kind of compares with the product stack. Now, I've seen a lot of people online in the comment section on articles like this trying to compare it to results that are available online, like, for example, the tech power-up review when Call of Duty Black Ops 6 first launched. However, I'm going to caution that I don't think that that's correct to do, because this is mentioning it's a tech power-up custom scene, whereas this 9070 was being tested in the built-in benchmark for the game. If you test a different scene, you will get different results. So they are not comparable when trying to figure out uh, how much faster one GPU is compared to another. So for example, the fact that in this tech power-up custom scene, the 7900 XTX uh, got 89 FPS does not mean that you can then take the 99 FPS uh, that this 9070 non-XT seems to have got in this uh, benchmark and directly compare those, because one's in the built-in benchmark and one is not. Um, 
So what I went ahead and did is I ran a couple of benchmarks on a couple of AMD GPUs in the built-in benchmark tool on my system using a 9800X 3D processor, which is the closest processor that we can get to this 9950X 3D that they're reporting here. Now, with that in mind, uh, I, I had to decide, okay, I have to leave for work in a few minutes. Honestly, I need to wrap up this video or I'm gonna be late for work. Gotta teach first period math, guys. Anyway, uh, so I had to decide which GPUs am I gonna test. So I started with a 7900 XT because in AMD's slides, uh, f uh, the only information AMD has officially given us uh, for the 9070 series is that the 9070 series seems to be lining up with the 7900 XT, 7900 GRE, and 7800 XT. It's somewhere in this ballpark. Although, are they talking about maybe uh, maybe that's a price point comparison? In other words, like we don't officially know if they're talking about the actual gaming performance. So that's a huge caveat right there. That being said, I did decide to start out with the 7900 XT for my testing. And that's the result that we were looking at here. Now, running this, um, I, I, again, this is at 4K native resolution, no upscaling, 4K extreme settings. I'm noticing my averages are way, way low. I mean, this is in the moment, not average, but we'll see the average right here at the end. This is way lower than what they were getting uh, on the 9070 test that they ran. Now, I have some thoughts about that. Uh, so again, here, the average I'm getting here is 67 FPS. And again, this is on a 9800X 3D processor, 4K native resolution. I've tried to match everything that they said that they did. Um, but if we actually compare that, that would mean that their 9070 tested almost 48% faster than the 7900 XT, which makes absolutely no sense given any kind of performance expectations for, that we have for that card. So is it extremely good at Call of Duty? Or are they falling into the issue with Call of Duty benchmarking, which is if you don't restart the game after changing graphic settings, they don't apply properly, which is what I think might be happening here. So when they're getting this result, um, if you switch to extreme settings while the game is running and you don't turn the game off and then reopen it, uh, I don't think it actually applies the graphic settings, which means that you could, if it had started out at lower graphic settings, you might think you're running at extreme graphic settings, but you're actually not, uh, which would explain this score being higher than it than seems reasonable compared to the testing that I'm doing here. So that's my suspicion as far as what's going on here. Uh, there's also the fact that this is reporting lower estimated uh, VRAM usage uh, compared to what uh, I'm getting here. However, Call of Duty tends to be a game that allocates more VRAM if you have more VRAM. So I, I'm using a 20 gigabyte card and it uh, seems to be allocating about 13 gigabytes. Uh, whereas the 9070 here, one thing we can learn from this is it does seem to be a 16 gigabyte card and it seems to be allocating nine gigabytes. So that's another issue. Uh, uh, again, possibly indicating that they're not really running at 4K extreme settings, but again, the estimated VRAM usage is, is, it can be thrown off just based on what the game's trying to allocate versus what it actually needed to run these settings. So that's not a, a definite like, ah, we caught them right there, right? So, so it's, a, it's a maybe. Now, when my 7900 XT got blown out of the water, I was like, well, how about the 7900 XTX? For one thing, as a sanity check, is my 7900 XT underperforming? Well, it, I don't know if you guys can see it super well. You can pinch and zoom on your phone. And, and actually, maybe I need to uh, resize my window here so it even shows up now that I, now that I look at it. Um, but in the top right corner here, uh, I, I was monitoring for uh, GPU usage. It was at 100%. Uh, the board power was what it should be. So there was no indication that I was somehow not fully utilizing my 7900 XT when it's running this test. If, if you look at this, the board power is well over 300 watts. The GPU one utilization is reporting at 100%. Uh, the built-in benchmark tool uh, you know, doesn't report any kind of CPU limitations, anything like that. So everything seems fine. So I ran my 7900 XTX through the same thing. Uh, and this one again, uh, once the benchmark actually gets going here, let's uh, skip ahead a little bit. 
Uh, you can see that the 7900 XTX, this is the reference model, is drawing nearly 350 watts, which is what it should be doing. There's no indication that it's uh, uh, bottlenecked by anything. It's showing 100% GPU utilization. And yet the frame rate results we're getting are, again, much, much lower than what we were seeing on that uh, reported benchmark from the 7900 XT, uh, uh, sorry, 9070 non-XT. So here we're seeing that I'm getting a 78 FPS average result uh, on my 7900 XTX, 78. So if I pop back into here and I go 99 divided by 78, uh, that's showing that the 9070 leaked benchmark result is tw almost 27% faster than a 7900 XTX. And again, given anything that AMD said, the fact that they say they're not chasing the high end, uh, given the fact that uh, their, their own slide deck seems to be indicating that the 9070 series is more in line with the 7900 XT, at least that's how I'm kind of interpreting this result. Maybe that's not what they meant. Uh, and even the uh, pre-release leaks and rumors uh, were that this is not, yeah, like, like I said, not going super high end, maybe uh, 7900 XTX at best. So again, these results just don't really seem to make a lot of sense. That's what I'm getting out of this. So um, make, make for it what you will. The, the result certainly seems amazing, which is why I, I think that it's probably just an issue, like I said, with the uh, Black Ops, uh, uh, the Call of Duty needing a, a game restart in order to actually apply the extreme settings, which means we don't, uh, probably don't know what settings these were actually running at. Now, maybe the, the, it ends up being the 9070 is just going to blow everything out of the water unexpectedly. I kind of have my doubts on that, but cool. Uh, so don't make too much out of these leaked benchmark results. That's my analysis of it. I've got to get to work. I'm literally about to be late. I need to go run. I hope all of you have an excellent day.